Good day everyone, David Paul speaking. It's a quarter to six UK time on the first trading day of uh, 2020. Uh, I want to answer or try to answer uh, some questions uh, that I've uh, received over the holidays on targets in swing trades. Uh, those of you that have looked uh, at uh, my presentation on swing trading that was on the VectorVest uh, website and uh, YouTube channel uh, will know that I, I looked at 10 points uh, that affect swing trades. But uh, I didn't get a great deal of time in that half hour uh, to talk about targets. So let me try and do some of that now. Uh, I'm looking at a share that I'm holding myself. It's called Lulu. They make up market, uh, gym kit, etc. And uh, like most things, they're well up today. Uh, but uh, on VectorVest, the relative value, which measures the price appreciation potential over the risk-free rate, uh, at 1.39, that's an excellent number. So that's driving the uh, the share price and the relative safety, their ability and to make money and grow uh, their earnings safely and predictably at 1.49 is better than excellent. But uh, it's, they should grow their earnings at 23% next year. But let's just look at the chart and look at the last swing trade that we could have taken. Now, folks, with exits, there are no uh, sure things that we should be doing. Uh, exits are a part of your own trading plan. Today, in this very first video, I'm going to talk about a scaling out methodology that works for a great deal of the people that I've taught it to. Uh, first of all, let's look at this last pullback. It pulled back to a support level. And uh, those of you that are proficient in FIB, if we click and go from that low to that high, we can see that it stopped pretty much at a 78% retracement of that range. Uh, now, uh, the 78%, uh, 0.786, the square root of the golden section, a very, very important number indeed. Uh, so, uh, earnings per share were rising, that's great. If we put on uh, Lane Stochastic, we can see the Stochastic was right down in the oversold area. Uh, the stochastics also showing reverse divergence, all the good things coming to the party. And then we got a nice up day. Uh, you could have got in after that hammer, although I didn't. I didn't think the tail was long enough, but on that up day. So let's assume uh, that uh, we, in fact, uh, decided to buy at the open of that day and uh, put a stop loss down underneath that low somewhere, a few ticks below that low. So... Uh, Every trade has got a probability associated with it. Uh, there are no sure things, folks. Uh, there's no 100% trades out there. It only takes one idiot somewhere in the world to totally stuff your position. Uh, but uh, with earnings per share, with the stochastic, with the trend, with the general market uh, being positive, uh, I would give that... Uh, trade a 65 to 70 percent uh, probability of being successful uh, what I suggest you do is that when you've made as much as you've risked in other words this little bit here uh, when you've made that little bit which by I would have been up here somewhere I'm not going to calculate it but by, it would have got you up to there when you actually make as much as you've risked exit half the position and bring your stop loss to entry. So increase the stop loss to entry. Now, on VectorVest, we have a trailing stop loss and we have a buy, sell, or hold recommendation. So once you've got your stop loss to entry, folks, then what I suggest you do is to chill. Don't worry too much about these ups and downs. As long as the share is on a green buy recommendation, do your best to hang in there. So the objective is to take a relatively short and sharp and quick profit on half the position, get your stop loss to entry so that uh, you can't lose any money on the second half. We've uh, got the ability to make money with no risk. Uh, now, the real profit in the trade comes from your ability to let the other half run. And uh, as long as 
it stays on a buy recommendation uh, then the objective is just let it run up the page so that's one way of doing it and it's a way uh, that uh, many of our vectorvay students have been successful with uh, it's got a lot of quick reinforcement in that you should be able to get half the position bank quite quickly uh, and not lose any on the second half that means that a high percentage of your trades will be winners which is emotionally quite satisfying all right so if the whole thing were to fall apart on you let's say a few days up here uh, then uh, you've made some money you're feeling good and the whole process in fact grows now if you want to target folks to sell into strength then we use the Fibonacci extension. Now I, I, I just click on retracement, go from there, pull it down to that low. So what we do is that we extend the pullback. And the major target then would be 1.618 of that pullback. And that would have meant that you'd have been buying in here and selling into strength at that level. Now in this case, the share has moved further and uh, you can never get it quite right i assure you that if you hadn't have sold there uh, uh, it would have pulled back on you so just remember that they all end badly sooner or later uh, if the market breaks the 1.618 extension of the last pullback as you can see it pulled back and kissed it and now it's making its way to the 2.618 extension of the last pullback if you are a swing trader many swing traders will take their money at the 1.618 extension of the last pullback i think if you've got leverage i.e you've leveraged yourself up on a spread bet or a cfd or something then by all means uh, as soon as it gets to that 1.618 extension of the last pullback bank it look for the next one so uh you can put in a fixed target if you wish and the Fibonacci work is excellent for fixed targets or you can uh, scale out get uh, half off when you've made as much as you've risked get your stop to entry and then do your best to hope for a runner where you've got a, a, a share that's so strong uh, that just keeps going up the page and ignores all the Fibonacci levels when the market is going well there's lots of those so I can't tell you exactly what to do folks uh, we don't trade markets we trade our beliefs about markets so what you what you need to do with the greatest respect and deference sit down and work out which plan of which I've just presented two I may add uh, suits your beliefs about markets best uh, I think that you can never quite get it right uh, so uh, a lot of work to be done uh, to put together an exit plan I think any analyst will tell you that after a week or two's work you can get your entries pretty much nailed down but exits are quite difficult I think if you've got leverage you should be selling into strength if you bought the share outright in the way that I did here uh, then uh, you can actually do your best to try and keep your hands off it get your stop to entry and let the second half run up hopefully you'll get a runner I hope this helps thank you